to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. In unity, no matter how powerful your secret place is with God, there are certain dimensions of spiritual possibilities that only happen under a corporate atmosphere. Hallelujah. While they prayed together and fasted, the Holy Ghost spoke to them and said, Separate me, Paul and Barnabas. He spoke to them, not to him. The Bible says how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It likens it to the oil that comes from the head of Aaron the priest down to his bed, down to his cat. The Bible says there the Lord hath commanded the blessing. So every time you come for koinonia or any spiritual meeting for that matter, let your spirit be open for these five things. Encounters, transformation that comes through the exegesis of the word, spiritual illumination. Number three, a manifestation of the power of God to meet needs, to provide supernatural solutions. Number four, impartations. Because every time God grants a grace to Jacob, it is because he intends for it to reach Israel. It is not God's idea that his, that his graces reside with only one person. So when he calls Jacob, it's because he has Israel in mind. Are we together? Tonight I want to teach on knowing God. We're building, we spoke about doctrine. The last time we met and we said how that doctrines are a body of truth that are responsible for the maturing of the saints haven't experienced and seen signs and wonders i have told you and i will say it again that signs and wonders do not establish the saints listen to me no matter how anointed, no matter how powerful, no matter the charismatism around the signs and the wonders that you see and experience, it does create conviction. Number two, they are, they are tokens of the Father's love. Number three, it announces what God is doing within a territory. Then it becomes a consolation to the Christian experience of the saints. But it was not allocated for the maturity of the saints. Only the word of God communicated, taught accurately, sustains the ability to mature the saints. Are we together? So we must submit to the teaching of the word. We must submit to doctrine. We will continue to experience miracles, signs and wonders. But our eyes must be first on Jesus and then the truth of his word. Because heaven and earth will pass away. The disciples saw miracles. But Jesus disappeared for only 72 hours. And they denied him. They ran away. So miracles are not enough to establish people. They saw miracles. Remember when he wanted to wash Peter's feet? Peter said, no way. Later on, Peter said, wash my feet, bath me. You see, all those emotional vacillations were proof of immaturity. As soon as Judas came and betrayed Jesus, the disciples thought Jesus would use his invincibility to just defeat those people. When he submitted to death, they ran away. They didn't just run away, they ran disappointed. John 21, Peter said, I can't do 2 0. I go a fishing. The other disciples said, We go with you. Let's go back to what we were doing before this karma came to deceive us. They toiled all night and there was no catch. Then they saw Jesus. He needed their attention again. So he used the miracle. Little children, have you any catch? And Peter said, No. And he said, Cast your net to the right side. And when he casted his net, watch this now. He was not able to drag, the Bible says, for the multitude of fish. Are we together? 
then the goodness of god convicted him immediately he knew he was a sinner he was naked he walked close and said depart from me i am a sinner and then he called him and when they sat down it's amazing that when peter came he met jesus already roasting fish that's what your bible said where he got it from is a mystery that he will have to tell us it's in your bible and then now that he got his attention he said sit down simon bar jonah lovest thou me more than this you came because of the manifestation of the miraculous but sit down because i'm going to give you an assignment to feed my sheep and also to feed my lamb the son of jonah do you love me more than miracles do you love me enough to be mentored enough to mentor others miracles are powerful but we cannot dwell just in the realm of the miraculous we have to trust God for the exegesis of truth. And tonight I want us to discuss very briefly the subject of knowing God. Look at me. Your confidence in this kingdom is predicated not just upon the reality of God, but your knowledge of the holy. John 17, please. We'll read from verse 1 to 3. Let's go. John 17. This is Jesus. This is the real Lord's prayer. Jesus is praying now. Theologically speaking, what we call the Lord's Prayer, yeah, even though it's the Lord's Prayer, but it was a lecture. It was a mentorship session teaching the disciples the protocol of prayer that works. Are we together? This is Jesus praying now. The Bible says, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify thee. Verse 2. It says, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. What is eternal life? Verse 3. Please read with me. Ready? One, two, read. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus, whom thou hast sent. Watch this. That means the journey of eternal life does not stop just with a confession your act of confessing the lordship of jesus according to romans 10 from verse 8 down to 10 only initiates you into the process that administers eternal life it says eternal life is a journey it's not just a one-off experience this is eternal life jesus is teaching the rabbi he says that they may know you please give it to us verse 3 this is eternal life that they may know you the only true god and Jesus whom thou hast sent so if you do not know God and you do not know Jesus there is a dimension of eternal life that has not been ministered to you the Bible puts it this way John chapter 10 and verse 10 it says the thief cometh not that means you have no business seeing him around except for this to steal to kill and to destroy then Jesus says but I am come that ye may have life that's a level but that you don't stop there you move from the realm of life to a dimension of abundant life you can have life but you can have abundant life abundant life is based on knowledge the knowledge of the holy are we together it is important that the saints know the lord many religions now respectfully speaking in fact most religions do not have a provision where you know the deity or the personality that is the object of worship and adoration. In fact, intimacy and relationship is not required in many religions. It's just an observance of rituals and then certain benefits that are derived from it. The faith life is the only dimension of life that requires that all you receive become a derivative of a relationship. When you go to a herbalist, God forbid, God forbid, but when you go to a herbalist, for instance, he's not going to ask you, do you know my name? Are you interested? Do you like me? That, no, 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 that's not why you are there. You may never even know his name. Why are you here? I'm here because I want to win some political position or an election or something, for instance. And he says, okay, this is what you will need bring a b c and you bring it and it says go it's done you may not even remember where the road to his shrine is again because 
every other life outside of the faith life does not demand relationship but God is very intentional about relationship is someone learning something so the kind of Christianity that is all about receiving just receiving breakthroughs just receiving liftings now they are powerful but you will never be able to enjoy the fullness of the life of God until you draw nigh to him to a level of a deeper relationship that is more than things more than cars more than houses more than miracles more than political positions more than business breakthroughs I don't downplay these things but if that is the subject and the object of your pursuit you will eventually be frustrated in your Christian experience when God truly wants to bless a man he gives him himself that is the real gift God gives those he loves he does not give you his hand he does not give you his power he gives you him give me you everything else can wait give me you I hope I'm not too late Lord give me you Lord give me you Lord, give me you, my prayer, Lord. Lord, give me ah. you. More than cars, more than reputation. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. One more time. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Listen down. We live in a world where every other thing is important except God. Every other thing is important. Whether you are born again or not, once you are rich, people believe you have everything. Whether you are born again and serious with God or not, once you have a privileged political position. Whether you are born again or not, we downplay Jesus. When you meet a young man and you ask him, so what have you achieved in life? He says, well, not much. I don't have a job yet. Um, I've not been able to build my house, but one thing I have is a relationship. Society will laugh at you and say, what a fool. You are wasting your time and wasting your years. But then if that gentleman is a disorganized person spiritually but has a house has a car they say wow you are a fine young man you are doing well it's just that you just need to be serious look at how we have downplayed spiritual thing if all i have is jesus i got something more than i will tell it to myself jesus is more than The real proof of love is not things. The real proof of love is giving yourself. So when God gives you himself, he gave you everything. When you give him offering, you have not given him everything. When you give him tithe, you have not given him everything. If you truly love him, what you give is not what you have. What you give is you my best lord is everything i am my best lord i give all i have to you listen years ago i sat down one day and i was overwhelmed at the faithfulness of god in my life 
I said, look what you've done to me. Look what you've made out of my life. And so this song came. You made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. You made me great. You made me great. You made me special. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you, my best Lord, is everything I have, my best Lord, I give all I have to you, my best Lord, is everything I have, my best Lord, I give all I have to you. If you truly love him more than your money, more than his support for a man of God and a church, more than giving gifts, the real gift you can give the Lord in honor and in gratitude for giving himself is to give yourself. This is why this ministry is called Koinonia. It's a platform of passionate lovers of God. People who are looking for more than his hand. People who are looking for more than his wisdom. You know, if I don't get to the word, I can stay here because what I'm giving you is a piece of my secret place. Sincerely, let me tell you, when I spend time with God, I hardly ask him for things. And this is not because of the faithfulness of God over my life, no. My concern is him. Can you really have God and lack anything? I was told of a story of a man who had very foolish sons. And he was a very wealthy man. He was about to die. And he said, now these my sons. And he had a servant. And he said, all right. You people have been foolish all through my lifetime with you. I'm about to die I will give you an opportunity to pick one of my assets anyone just name one but only one and he had a lot he said whatever else is left my servant will carry it and the boys were angry he said how could daddy do this you have estates you have empires and you're giving us just one to pick one and one of the sons looked at the servant and said I choose the servant For the first time the father saw wisdom before going to his grave if i have to choose one and the rest is given to the servant let that one i choose be the servant so when god puts a car a political position watch this lifting anointing emoji anointing revelation I'm not being sarcastic. Fame. I know what many of us will choose. People have rejected me. I need fame. You quickly pick fame. And then he puts himself and he watches as many Christians come to pick other things. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength, and your sight. Listen, if you ever have the opportunity to choose Him, kick that car, kick that fame, kick that ministry, kick that preaching, kick everything, and hold on to Him like Jacob held on to Him. He said, I will not let you go. I made a mistake in chapter 28. I was punished for more than 20 years in the house of Laban because I chose other things aside you. Someone, this is a message for you right now. To pray, you are saying, I'm busy. That's what you are doing. To fast, I am busy. To seek his face, you say, you know, there's this new appointment I just had and I need to travel around the world. Um, there are dignitaries coming from everywhere. And he's looking at you and saying, do you not know my value?
I'm not wasting your time, believe me. I'm showing you a secret of secrets. More than gifts, more than houses. That you choose him and what men pray for become your gift. They will bring it to you. I made up my mind that you will become the object of my pursuit, not ministry. No. I will give up Koinonia and close down Koinonia in Abuja 1,000 times to preserve my relationship with you. I will cancel any ministration without thinking twice if it ever interrupts his presence. You love me today because what of what he has made out of my life. I will be foolish to leave him. Do you leave what works? Ah, God is speaking to someone. You need to return back. This is not what I even want to talk about. Oh. But God is speaking to someone. The reason why things have not moved in your life is because you focused on many things. You have been taught by society that Jesus Christ is a nuisance and that the secret place does not carry destiny value. So every time you stay with God, you feel cheated. While the rest go ahead of you, you feel cheated. You feel foolish for giving God your time and your attention. My life is a testament of what can happen to a man when you give God time. God is speaking to someone. I believe that this is by the Spirit. I've not even begun to talk about If this is where we stop, that's it. God is calling on people. Return to the secret place. Return to the place where I made you. I found you as nothing and I helped you. Now you are allowing distraction. Distraction. Listen to me, dear people of God. We live in a celebrity world where everyone wants to be a celebrity. And don't get me wrong, God wants to lift you. You know, when you watch people come in, you just admire them and you hope to be like them. And some of you can't wait for the service to finish so that you say, give me a double portion and all these things that people do. Listen to me, sit down and take God seriously. I love, I love I love your presence I love, I love I love your presence I love, I love I love you Jesus I love, I love, I love your presence, yeah. I love, I love, I love your presence. A herbalist can give you fake power, but he cannot give you presence. No, you can fake power. But you cannot fake a real relationship. Listen to me. In this kingdom, our honor is derived from our relationship. Our, the power that we communicate, the influence, the grace, is predicated upon our relationship. I wouldn't trade you. Don't sing. Listen to what I'm singing. Wouldn't trade you for riches unto, and I really mean it. You are truly, you are my everything, 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 Lord. You are everything to me. Everything, everything, Lord, you are everything, everything to me. You're my treasure, 
my priority who can compare to you truly great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star you truly Some of you are crying. I wanted to talk about something else. But you see how the Holy Spirit leads us. Please just focus on what God is saying. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the When Jacob dismissed his wives, when Jacob dismissed his cattle, when he was alone, then a man came. There is something about the jealousy of God. He will not loiter around when there are many other things distracting you. So he will step back to honor your decision to ignore him until life forces you to need him. God is speaking to you. You may be a man of God. I want crowd. I want people to call my name. I want everyone to listen to my teachings. You may be sincere, but while you are doing all that drama, heaven is watching you. And God is saying, is this all that you want? Is this all that I mean to you? To be a celebrity? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. All I want is to win an election. Let me become a famous person. All I want is to join the billionaire list. There is something about a heart that pants after God. You know how you are going to do it, but I leave you with the God of your salvation. Tell him I'm here again, oh God, sincerely. Finally, finally, I hear you. I hear your call. I hear your call. Cry unto God. Hear me, I'm not wasting your time. This is church. We're not faking it here. Sincerely from our hearts. This is why many do not see the power and the glory of God. There's such distraction. Pursuit for things. I'm not against that. But it must be everything. Talk to the Lord. You came to church. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, 
all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, take all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. I give my everything. You have my everything. I give my everything. Yeah, you have my everything. Say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, use all of me, take all of me, yeah. They call of me, they call of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Elanda Silla Kosciata Brande Gidiana. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. There's a part of the song that I love. Listen, it says, Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. That's the language of the matured in the spirit. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart Lord I will bow to you to no other God but you Lord, I will worship you, nothing hands at me, but you. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, the diagnosis is that your strength is small. God, you did not prosper me, I will leave you. It's a sign that you do not know him. Lord, I've been a worker in church for a long time and you have refused to bless me, I will leave you. That is a transaction. In as much as he has covenanted to bless you, when you truly know God, it's a point of no return. It's like an initiation into something that you cannot come out of. Capacity. They shall be strong. Number two is a promise. They shall do exploits. Not talk exploits. Not wish exploits. That anyone who pays the price to know God, it is guaranteed that you will do exploits in ministry, in business, in life, and in destiny. I submit to you, therefore, 
that the reason why we have so many well-meaning believers but there are no notable dimensions of the possibilities of God captured within our territory is because very few people have paid the price to know him it's costly to know God the price for all of God is all of you is costly the price for life is death is costly you have to look away from many things that is the price oh but when you find him then the world begins to look for you when you find him then what you have been looking for begins to look for you when you find him all men seek for you dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline